Located along the Silk Road, the city of Bukhara in Uzbekistan has been home to the Jewish community for over two millennia. In medieval times, Bukhara became the heart of Jewish life in Central Asia. The term Bukharan became a name for all Jewish communities in the region. The community developed a distinct culture, maintaining a long tradition of resilience through trade and crafts, such as textile dyeing and jewelry. The foremost representation of these traditions are preserved in the Jewish houses of Bukhara. Living examples of vernacular architecture oriented within a system of mahalas, or neighborhoods. Located in the historic city center, a World Heritage Site since 1993, these houses illustrate a close relationship with the environment, employing earthen materials as an answer to the harsh desert climate. Despite their outstanding heritage value, they are now under threat of disappearance due to development and new building techniques. Aaron Aronoff came to New York City after the fall of the Soviet Union. For over 30 years, he has transported thousands of embroidered garments, kitchen and farm implements, portraits, and other examples of traditional Bukharan Jewish culture from his native Uzbekistan to Queens, where they are displayed in three rooms of one of the Bukharan schools. I w created this museum because I grew, in, grew up in such an atmosphere. Everything what you see here, it belonged to my people. It was in their houses. So we had clay houses. You put uh, sand, clay, and then you turn it like this. I made with my friends 1,000 bricks a day. Most of our time we spend in the open air. Once a week, my mother baked bread and you say, you see tandoori over there. We had problem with the uh, kosher meat. So we you see those uh, sheep, chicken. We had problem with kosher wine. We had our grapes, and we made the wine and kept them in those jugs. We didn't go to the restaurant for wedding. You see that pan? We could uh, make dish for 100, 200 people. Our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren would like to know about their roots. By telling them the story, it is nothing. We'll tell them, come to the museum, so you will see the way of life, how it, it used to be. Following the site's inclusion on the 2020 World Monuments Watch, WMF and the International Institute for Central Asian Studies, in partnership with the Bukhara State University, launched the traditional Bukharan Jewish Houses project. Through the use of digital technologies, the project aims to create best practice conservation guidelines and enhance community awareness of traditional techniques while fostering collaboration and knowledge between different stakeholders. The project is also intended to develop the necessary inventory, documentation, and condition assessment of these unique and historic houses with the support of the Torin Polytechnic University in Tashkent. Since 1988, WMF's Jewish Heritage Program has supported conservation work at nearly 60 sites around the world. To learn more, visit wmf.org slash Jewish Heritage Program. Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is really great to see so many people joining us today for this event. My name is Javier Ors Ausin, and I am a project manager at World Monuments Fund, and I will be your host today for this On My Watch event 
focusing on the traditional Bukharian Jewish houses in Bukhara, Uzbekistan. Today's event is part of a series of conversations where we invite architects, urban planners, preservationists, and other stakeholders to really explore the political, cultural, and technical issues that emerge from the preservation uh, projects that we implement at cultural heritage sites included in the World Monuments Watch program around the world. You just saw a video that I hope gave you a sense of the richness and significance of the Bukharian Jewish houses. And we will talk more about that during this program, but I wanna take this opportunity to really thank our local team in Bukhara for their efforts to put together this video, as well as to Rabbi Abraham Iskakov uh, from Bukhara and Aaron Aronov from New York for their, their help to put this together. Before I continue uh, to the actual program, let me just share some important information about today's event. This event is hosted in partnership with our great colleagues from the European Association for the Preservation and Promotion of Jewish Culture and Heritage, and in collaboration with the International Institute for Central Asian Studies, who are also part of this project, and with the New York and UK chapters of the American Institute of Architects. In fact, if you are here uh, from AIA and want to get credits, um, this program has been approved for AIA credits. And to receive those credits, you will have to follow a link that will be posted in the chat later on. Also, if you have any questions during this program, please feel free to write those questions either in the chat or in the Q&A box and we will try to address as many as possible during the program and particularly during the Q&A section at the end. Finally, I would like to thank the David Berg Foundation for their lead support to this project, as well as to the Tiana Dera Foundation and Nelly and Robert Gibson. And really to all the supporters and people who really support the Jewish Heritage Program at World Monuments Fund. And now let's talk about today's program, which as you know, is focusing on the traditional Bukharian Jewish houses that are really a unique and exceptional example of vernacular architecture within the urban fabric of Bukhara and a set of three mahalas within the historic center that as you heard in the video, is a World Heritage property designated by UNESCO in 1993. These houses really represent the important and active Jewish life that flourished in Central Asia, in Uzbekistan and in Bukhara in particular over the centuries. But beyond being a form of community expression, as you saw in the video, these houses also illustrate the really close relationship between architecture and the environment in the way they are designed and in the way they are constructed uh, using earthen materials that really respond to the climate conditions of Uzbekistan. These traditional houses are, as I said, great examples of cultural heritage in Uzbekistan, but they are also very vulnerable and very delicate. And in fact, some of them are disappearing. And that is the reason why they were included in the 2020 World Monuments Watch program to really advocate for their preservation and protection while maintaining the diversity and livelihood of the communities that live in Bukhara. After the watch inclusion, we started working with our partners from the International Institute for Central Asian Studies and Bukhara State University and many other partners that have joined this project since we started a year ago to, as you saw in the video again, really 
conduct a project that would uh, tell us how many houses are remaining in the historic center of Buhara to really document and assess what their physical conditions are and ultimately to develop conservation guidelines and strategies that will articulate how they should be or could be preserved going forward and also engaging the community in the process. So it is in this context that we convene today's conversation. And I am very pleased to introduce today's panelists and I would say great colleagues uh, because they each bring an interesting perspective to this project. And you know, the four of us were just in Bukhara last week conducting a film mission. They still are there. I'm the only one who left. And you know, we visited the houses, met with members of the community, met with other stakeholders, and really had a lot of uh, working sessions while we were there. So I am really, really happy that you know we were there just a few days ago and now we have this opportunity to bring really the most recent information ideas and findings and share them with you in this in this program so without further ado let me do the introductions dr dimitri boyakin director of the international institute for central asian studies which i will refer as icas from now on Dr. Boyakin is a senior research scientist, head of the Department of Documentation and Archaeological Conservation at the Institute of Archaeology, MES, in Almaty, Kazakhstan, and general director of archaeological expertise and NGO. Hi, Dimitri. Hi, Javier. Hi, everybody. Sukrob Babaev, director for strategic development of ICAS. Sukrob uh, has served as the team lead in Bukhara since we started this project a year ago. And since 2020, he is also the co-director of International Scientific Research Center for a Study and Preservation of Central Asian Historical and Cultural Heritage. And Sukrob is also a local Bukharian, and I know that he's grown up spending a lot of time in the historic center. So he brings his professional perspective, but also a very important uh, personal perspective on this project. Hi, Sukrab. Hi, Javier. Glad to see you today. And finally, Dr. Ona Vileikis, heritage expert and senior researcher at the University College London in the UK and ICAS as well. Dr. Vileikis is an architect and cultural heritage specialist with a PhD in civil engineering. And Ona, uh, Dr. Vileikis, is also the project coordinator for this project and really the person that is moving everything forward with all of us. Hi, Ona. Hi, Javier. Hi, everyone today. So hello, everyone, and welcome again. Uh, I am really excited, as I said before, that the four of us were in Bukhara just a few days ago. And here we are now in this virtual window to share with everyone where we are in the project and again our most recent activities and findings. So uh, I want to start with you, Dimitri. Um, you are here, uh, you know, as the director of uh, ICAS. So I really would like you to tell us uh, more about the role that ICAS is playing in this in this project. So please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, distinguished <clears throat> Mr. Javier, um, uh, dear uh, webinar participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will start uh, my presentation with uh, maybe some high words, but uh, I would say that negative, and uh, and we can start our presentation. I thank you. Uh, negative and uh, burdensome uh, reflections on global headwinds should probably be omitted in order to follow the grand style and to put the positive spin on uh, my presentation. However, the reality recalls the deep and dismaying uh, dissension between the people and cultures that uh, intermittently uh, take place almost everywhere. The basis for uh, further progress in this direction, the idea of rapprochement and acceptance uh, of diversity is determined 
uh, by the uncompromising aspiration for the planetary peace, which acts as the heartbeat necessary for life. Nevertheless, first and foremost, it is necessary to ask the question, what is the intent of, the, of this comprehensive concept? The famous uh, Kazakh writer and politician, Aljaz Suleimanov defines the main goal as follows. The rapprochement of cultures will become possible only when we understand the reasons for disagreement between the cultures, which occurred centuries, millennia ago, and these cracks have already turned into abysses. Understand the reason. That is the most important question. I'm convinced that one of the key factors is in understanding the reasons can and should be, and by and be as uh, signs in the various manifestations. Of course, alongside the information, the, the information and popularization of the results of the researches, uh, the principle of historism in this regard underlines the model of cognition uh, at the uh, basis uh, for the analysis of changeable processes. Now, to judge or to understand is an earnest question by Mark Bloch, Rice in his famous work, uh, Apology of History, which uh, he wrote uh, in the tragic years of 1941-1942. Uh, his uh, contemplation made uh, him realize the following. He said, we always have limited understanding. Anyone who differs from us is a foreigner and political opponent is usually treated as a bad person. We need to better understand the human soul in order to wage struggle and even more in order to avoid them while there is still time. If history abandons the habits of the uh, punishing Arch Arch Archangel, uh, it will be able to help us to heal from this flow. After all, history is a great and varied experience of mankind. It is a meeting of people over centuries. If the meeting is fraternal, it will uh, be truly well sown for life and science. This endeavors, and can, you, can we switch to the second slide, please? This endeavors result, resulted in the foundation of International Institute for Central Asian Studies, ICAS, as the initiative uh, of UNESCO on the basis of agreement signed by 11 countries in 1995, 25 years ago, by the way. Uh, the activities of ICAS include development and strengthening the, uh, of international and interdisciplinary scientific cooperation in the study of the history and culture of the Central Asia. The mission of ICAS is to draw the attention of a wide audience to the scientific and cultural problems of Central Asia, as well as to boost cooperation between local scientists and their foreign colleagues in the framework of an interdisciplinary study of the region, comprising tangible and intangible cultural heritage, environment, archaeology, history, history of art, history of religion, and other areas. ICAS uh, is uh, increasing its cooperation not only with the member states. The uh, Institute has wide network associate members, including major universities, organizations, and research centers specializing on in the cultural, uh, uh, cultural heritage. Leading researchers and experts from different countries take part in the activities of ICAS as the corresponding members. Acting as a partner and co-organizer, the Institute carries out research projects on the full-scale basis. Aiming at uh, supporting unique research projects, ICAS actively assists in the research for funding sources. Uh, owing to the presence uh, of a wide network of uh, partners and its status, ICAS uh, can establish contacts not only with individual scientists and research institutions, but also with national governments and the countries. The mission values and aims of the Institute make it uh, at the center of the implementation of the project of various scales. It is important to know that ICAS enjoys permanent support from UNESCO. Can we switch to another slide, please? Uh, at present, ICAS is undertaking a number of major international projects, such as 
You can see it uh, on the screen, archaeological landscape of Central Asian cooperation with University College London, covering the territory of five countries, including China, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. Next slide, please. A project of uh, digitaliz digitalization of archival materials of Central Asia, several projects to assess the impact of uh, develop, new development of world heritage sites in different countries of the Central Asia. Can you switch to another one? Archaeological research and development of project of archaeological parks, organization of in conduct of different international seminars, conferences, trainings. Next one. Uh, the Institute uh, provides uh, research grants for three main categories, scientific research, conferences, publications, monographs, and finally, the collection of scientific documentation for the presentation of nomination, their uh, fulfillment and support. One of the institute top priorities is the traditional Bukharian Jewish house, houses project, aiming to document and develop conservation strategies for these unique historic sites. Next slide, please. The traditional houses, are the heart of the historic center of Bukhara, Uzbekistan, a World Heritage listed property since 1993. Despite their outstanding heritage value, these traditional houses are exposed to rapid transformations. Following their uh, inclusion on the 2020 uh, World Monument Fund, uh, Watch and World Monument Fund uh, and the International Institute for Central Asian Studies launched a two years project to reduce the risk of deterioration. With an eye to, uh, towards the cultural diversity of uh, the Pearl of uh, East, Bukhara and Samarkand, with their authentic, specific and memorable images in the formation of which the ancient large community of Bukhara and Samarkand Jews played an important role. It is impossible not to think about the fact that the cultural space formed as a Samarkand or and uh, Bukharo Yahudilari, this uh, seemingly unshakable foundation of history created for centuries in an area of rapid technological um, ad uh, advertisement, uh, which um, incites generations to change almost in everything from architectural style to clothes, clothing style melts like snow in the summer, unfortunately. A detailed comprehensive study as well as a perception of deep origins of manifestation of the cultural space, architecture, language, traditions of the original culture of Bukharian Jews contribute to accomplishment of one of the main goals of the unique project of the World Monuments Fund, which lies in the development and ad adoption the, of the effective ways how to manage this fragile part of the heritage in the name of its salvation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Dimitris. You know, and thank you to you and to the entire ECAS team for, you know, being part of this project with us, but also for all the efforts that you do to preserve cultural heritage in Uzbekistan and Central Asia. It's great to see all the work that you are doing. So now I would like to invite you, Sukrov, to speak. Um, as I said before, uh, you are a local Buharian and you have been overseeing, here you are, uh, and you have been overseeing the field work in Buhara since we started a year ago. So I would really like if you can share uh, a little bit, uh, an overview on the significance and the history of the Buharian Jewish houses with everyone in the audience today. Well, hello. Um, I'm glad to to participate in such a uh, interesting webinar, and uh, let me uh, share a bit of my own experience and, of course, of my knowledge about uh, Bukhara Jews. Uh, and the, because the topic of today's discussion is the Bukhara Jewish community and uh, the heritage that was left, or left which which is living now so uh so originally bukharian jew uh, community jewish community uh started its history uh more than millennia ago so it was a long way stabilon through uh 
through the territory of modern Iran and Afghanistan, and then finally with the stop in Bukhara, where uh, probably the Jewish community, as we can guess now, because we don't know for sure, but I like this uh, idea that Jewish community fell home here and decided to stay here for a long, long time. And uh, as we see on the map, this is the map of uh, made by uh, topographers in 1910. So here we can see uh, three, this is the whole territory of Bukhara, which was limited with walls, but uh, also we can see three uh, spots, red spots here. This is the territory where Bukharian Jewish community uh, used to live and lives now. Why I say used to live, because now we don't have uh, this number of the members of community that was in even uh, 1970s, when uh, it was the Soviet period, when Jewish community start to uh, immigrate to uh, United States and Israel, Germany. And, uh, as you know, the history of Bukhara goes back to thousands and thousands of years, 1,500 years. So in Bukhara, known as a uh, center of a trade, which means a center of uh, different cultures and crossroad of these cultures. And of course, religions. And also, uh, the culture that was brought with religions and uh, beliefs. So uh, Jewish community was one of the many communities who used to live in Bukhara in Middle, uh, in middle Ages. And uh, some of them are not there anymore. There were many uh, others like uh, Arab community or like Hindu communities or many others. So uh, it was interesting. And of course, it is uh, hard. It is really, uh, it will be strange if we think that uh, Jewish community can be isolated from whole the life of Bukhara. Because uh, as we know, uh, the Jewish community is uh, the one who was holding the culture of Bukhara and even more, if we talk about uh, certain things like music, uh, music that is known as Shashmakom now, which is uh, a classic music of Uzbek culture, uh, was uh, kept also by a Jewish musician. Thanks to them, they kept this tradition of this musician and all the knowledge that they sh shared later with all others and now fortunately we have this wonderful music so um, on the next slide uh, as i said uh, it was a big community and on the next on this slide we can see the one probably one of the families uh, of bukhara jews who lived in that marked area in the map before the previous map and uh, as you all see uh, they don't have such a big difference except for maybe uh, the, uh, what is the, except for the maybe the hats, because they were wearing different hats because of their tradition. And because normally we know that in Muslim country, they were wearing a different kind of a hat, but this is a, a really small difference. And on the background, you can see traditional, a wall with the doors, of a house of traditional Bukharian house, which is typical to see now um, all over Bukhara historic center. And <clears throat> the next slide. Shows us again, representatives of Jewish community reading talk. Uh, the leader uh, is an adult and uh, young boys uh, following him. So that brings us to the idea that it was quite open and free for them to uh, make their services according to their uh, traditions of their religion. And uh, of course, they had a different religion, different from local. 
they were not Muslim, but uh, since so they, they had their own synagogues and that uh, still exist and even not one, but two in Bukhara acting synagogues. So that means that uh, Bukhara culture, here we can see the uh, synagogue picture of a synagogue and something interesting that uh, we can see here is the all attributes of the synagogue in places to sit and pray and uh, the decoration on the wall. But if you look in the center, uh, the column, the column which is a traditional Bukharian column, I mean the basement, I mean the the column itself and the decoration on it you can find in many other houses and so that brings us again to the idea of the great tolerance because even uh, despite many stereotypes uh, Jewish community was uh, represented by their representatives in the city life and they had their uh, representative called, called Kalantar, which means a head. So through this, we can see that Jewish uh, community was active part of, of the life of Bukhara. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sukhra, uh, for really, you know, bringing the history of the little overview for, on the history of the Jewish community uh, in Bukhara. There are many questions that come to my mind, but I think we are going to leave them for the discussion. Uh, now I would like to bring you, Ona, to uh, the conversation and really ask you to share with all of us, with people in the audience, more details about the project that we started a year ago and where we are in the process. So please, the floor is yours. Thanks, Javier. And for the introduction, it is an honor to be today sharing the, in a, a kind of a snapshot of our project. In the next slide, you will see the most important question I have asked myself and question that I have received from others. And this is why this project? Aside because Bukhara is in the heart of all of the ones in this team, the traditional Bukharian Jewish houses project comes in a time of changes. For example, the traditional techniques and know-hows are getting rapidly replaced by new construction techniques that most of the time are aggressive to the context and are causing irreversible changes, not only to the houses or urban areas, but to the climate and society. The traditional Jew Buharian Jewish houses uh, share all common attributes of the typical Buharian houses, but they were also distinctive. As, as we heard from Sukro before, there were some differences with how the people were dressed well, the same thing was with the houses. With, they have a special decorative paintings. They have a basement for storing food and wine. And there are many other examples. Our vision, it is to retain as much as possible all these attributes that make them unique while understanding the needs of the 21st century community. For these, as you will see in the next slides, we are using digital technologies such as aerial photogrammetry to create orthophotos to assess, assess the relationships and the structures of the so-called mahalas or neighborhoods. And in the next slide, you will see the 3D scanning and close range photogrammetry we are doing uh, to produce point clouds in order to create a record um, and a metric survey for condition and the structural assessments for future um, restoration and conservation of the houses. In the next slide, you will also see how we are combining these digital technologies with site visits and interviews uh, to the community. And coming to our last slide, our next steps will lead us to get a great understanding of the existing um, uh, today, uh, or what exists today in the Buharian Jewish Mahalas. With this, I will leave you with a video showing the work we are carrying out. I hope you enjoy the music and the images.
Great, Ona, this is such a great video. Thank you for transporting us to Bukhara for a few seconds. It is also great to see that, you know, in every image that we saw in the video, there was always people, uh, the team conducting the work, but also people from the community, because I think this, that human dimension that really articulates the significance of these houses is really important. This is something that we have been talking since the very beginning of this project. Um, but I just um, want to ask you one question, um, since you addressed the project more directly. Since the beginning of this uh, webinar, we've talked that uh, one of the ultimate goals of this project is to develop conservation guidelines. So I want to ask you, in your opinion, what do you think um, needs to is needed for these guidelines to be successfully embraced and implemented? once they are developed? Thanks, Javier, for this question, because it's, as you mentioned, it's our ultimate goal, are these guidelines. But important for me is always the process, right? Uh, there are two um, things I would like to have light, uh, highlight. The first one is uh, we do need to understand the current state of the houses and really important the changes. And this is what we are uh, currently working on. And through these guidelines, we would like to manage change and consider the evolution of this vernacular architecture as dynamic. And the second um, is engaging community, uh, or as we say in Uzbek, Mahala. The community uh, includes owners who currently take care of their heritage, but also we have at the same time uh, the municipality, for example, who is the Hokimiat who will provide the legal framework so that we can enforce you know, all these guidelines and uh, actually make it happen. Okay, well, so at this point, I think it's a good moment to open the discussion with the three of you. Um, and I wanna start off by uh, bringing this idea that um, has been mentioned by some of you during the presentations but also when we were on the ground a few days ago of uh, Buharian shared heritage. This is always very important everywhere where we work and in the field, but I feel that it's even more important in a place, in a city like Buhara, a city that is in the crossroads of many different communities, a multicultural city, and uh, for the case of the Buharian Jewish houses, because when we are speaking about houses that belong to a community and were built by the Jewish community, the typology, the, the domestic typology that we are looking at also represents, belongs to Buhara, represents Buharian life and craftsmanship and history. So I would like to uh, start off by asking you about their present situation today. Do uh, they have some sort of legal protection or recognition as heritage individually, all of these houses? And also um, what is happening in most of them? Um, are they abandoned, inhabited, uh, uh, have been, uh, change the use of the houses? You know, this is a long question probably. Um, maybe Sukrob, since you are local and you grew up in Bukhara, you can start addressing this question. And you are muted, so you have to unmute yourself, please. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Uh, so um, uh, I can talk as Bukharian, that which is always really close to my heart because you, as you mentioned, I'm Bukharian. So here in Bukhara, we say we are Bukharian. That means uh, no matter what nation you are, what belief you are, you are Bukharian. And uh, of course, uh, the situation as I guess, probably in the world, Uh, the situation is changing and changing because that is coming in our life and that is that's uh, so uh, 
So Sukrob, it seems that we are having um, some Of course, there's a big difference. with your internet connection. Um, I really want you to answer this question, but I think we are having trouble uh, understanding what you're saying. Let's give it a try. And if not, maybe Dimitri or Rona can share also their uh, thoughts on this. Let's, let's try again. How is your internet going now? I can hear you now. Javier. Okay. Yeah. So I hope it, it continues okay, as I said. So, uh, so yes, and this is the maybe one of the main concerns. But again, uh, fortunately, this, of course, there was a lack of knowledge through this uh, previous Soviet period, because of course we people do understand where they live, and of course they evaluate all uh, the th surrounding that they have, including the houses. And especially now, what but you also could see and Dimitri, so. Okay, so we are having some trouble hearing you. Um, I don't know, Dimitri, Ona, if you wanna add something else to, to what we could really understand from Sukrov's so answer. We have uh, seen the evidence of people starting to. Let's, yeah. Ona Dimitri, do you wanna add anything else to this answer? Yes, I'll be happy to continue just a little Thank bit uh, what so uh, Sukrov was saying. So uh, the question was about, for example, ownership, right? Uh, right now, the houses are private, but are also um, national uh, protected. And uh, so there's, you know, it depends. It could be it could be a private house. It could be a national protected, like it could be protected national, but also owned by the state. So it's uh, it's different. There, all of them are within the World Heritage Area, uh, which is protected under under the UNESCO World Heritage Convention. And the the state, the we are still working on uh, identifying what is the current state. There have been several surveys in the past. Uh, from UNESCO and other colleagues, and uh, but we really want to understand what is happening now in uh, 2021. So hopefully we'll get some results soon. But yes, there are some abandoned houses, and yes, they're going under um, big changes uh, due to development, tourism. Uh, a lot of them have been turned into um, hotels, but not necessarily all of them have lost their significance. Okay, so I hope everyone will understand that we are all connecting from different parts of the world and you know sometimes you know we have internet issues so we're going to continue. Uh, I'm glad that Scrub we have you here. Let's try to uh, bring another question in a few minutes. But since I have you uh, on speaking about this, um, I also want to ask you again, going back to the conservation guidelines that we discussed before. A lot of people in the audience, might know what conservation guidelines means and what they are, uh, but some people might not know. So I would like you, if I would like if you can uh, say something about what type of document this is, what type of information it contains, and how it can be used for the preservation of the Bukharian uh, houses going forward. Actually, I would like to start with your last part, which is Bukharian houses because the idea, although we are targeted, targeting at the traditional Jewish um, Bukharian houses, it will serve for the whole historic center of Bukhara uh, to um, know, you know how to uh, conserve and maintain uh, the, their houses. Um, so we're preparing different documents. One of the documents is a technical document for um, that we would like also to introduce to the code of construction in order to have uh, traditional techniques as part of this code. And this is important because they will be uh, legally acceptable to have all these uh, changes um, towards uh, traditional techniques and not necessarily new uh, architecture or new materials. And a second document we would like to have is addressed to the owners uh, of the um, uh, historic houses, and uh, we will explain in an easy way 
how to um, make uh, repairs, maintenance, uh, what they could do, what is important not to do, so that we can preserve that uh, significant of the, uh, of the houses. But also not only looking at the houses, but at the uh, mahalas, uh, yeah, this urban context, because we cannot just see single houses in, in Bujara. Bujara uh, is composed of mahalas, and we have to see them as a whole. Uh -huh. Well, that's, I couldn't agree more with you. So now, since we are talking about the context, um, you know, you were talking about the urban context, but there's also the social context of the communities, the owners. Um, I have a question about the role in this process. Um, how are you planning to, or how are we planning through this process? I mean, how have we have done it so far to engage with uh, the communities that still live in the historic center, in the Mahalas, in the houses, uh, and also um, the Jewish community particularly, the Jewish community that is in Bukhara, the Jewish community that left. We've seen some interviews today in the video to the rabbi in Bukhara and to a member of the diaspora in New York. So I know that that is a path, but if you could say a little bit more about that, maybe Ona, Sukrov, uh, since you are on the ground conducting this work, what is the role of the community in this process? I guess I'll speak. Uh, I'm not sure if Sukrov is, is, is online now. Maybe you uh, can start and then we can pass it. Exactly, first. exactly. Well, so our idea is to carry out a uh, cultural mapping. We somehow have started already involving uh, the community, but we also would like to understand who live in these houses and you know, how they have been changing also from owner to owner, uh, from different backgrounds, uh, social and religious backgrounds. Um, we would like to bring these uh, stories and this requires the support of the local community, local Bukharian community, uh, and also the international community, as you mentioned, because there's a big uh, Bukharian community outside that I'm pretty sure is interested in, in uh, knowing what happened with those houses. And even if they're not there, uh, bringing those stories back um, to us and back to Bukhara and then spread uh, to be spread all over the world. Um, so this is only a plan we still have. We, first, we, have, we would like to finalize uh, the documentation that we are doing and uh, we hope that uh, future funding will come so that we can literally spread all over and uh, Bukhara will be known all over the world. It is a plan, but it's also already moving because as you said, we have been able to engage. I mean, you all on the ground, on the field, have been able to really speak with a lot of members of the Jewish community, but we have been able to capture some of those interviews as we saw in the, in the previous video. So Krov, would you like to add anything else to this question, especially thinking that you are a member of the Bukharian community too? Are you still here, Sukrov? You are muted. Uh, yes, Javier. It's, yes. It's Go due ahead. to some uh, uh, unstable internet connection. I hope you hear me now. Yeah. We thank do. you so much. So uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, well, um, uh, I, I missed some of the question because of the. Uh, of the bad connection, <laughs> so. I was asking about the role of the community in general and the Jewish community. And, uh, well, what I can say process. about the Jewish of my colleagues mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So Jewish community is quite active now. We have really close cooperation with uh, the leader of the Bukharian Jewish community, uh, Abraham Ishakov, who is uh, ready and uh, full of energy to help us uh, and cooperate to, through this project. And uh, we, we have been to synagogue all together and guided by him. And uh, he was explaining us uh, the history of synagogue that goes back to uh, 16th century. So uh, nowadays, the Bukharian Jewish community is not as big as it was. 
And now uh, about 200 people left their representative of this community. Uh, the others, of course, as I mentioned before, immigrated to Israel, uh, United States, and other countries. So, but but they are uh, full of energy through our uh, because I'm Bukharian again through our friends, common friends who heard about this project. They are happy this project is happening in Bukhara. That's good to yeah. that's good to hear. So there is a lot of questions uh, in the chat and I'm gonna bring a couple of them very quickly so that we can uh, respond, we can uh, offer some, some light to, to, to the process. Um, one of the questions is focusing on uh, the distinctive architectural features of the houses. And I know that this has been part of the process to really uh, identify what, what differentiates this house to other this type of houses to other houses in the historic center. So um, the question says, how are the Jewish houses distinguished from the other Bukharian houses? If uh, one of you uh, could answer this, maybe yes. Anna or Sukro, go ahead, Sukro. Yeah, if you if you let me. So, um, so of course, uh, Buh Jewish house is. First of all, traditional Bukharian house that has all the attributes of Bukharian house in all the meaning, in functional, decorational, and other things. Uh, but due to um, Jewish community, and they believe because, as I said before, they uh, this is a house uh, that where Jewish community live, and they have different culture, different uh, rituals, religion rituals as it was mentioned also in the first video in our webinar. So uh, they had some, some small differences. Uh, that uh, probably could uh, have been implemented in their houses, such as uh, ground floor uh, to store some uh, things. And probably to do some work, uh, uh, work buying some fabric. This was what uh, the Jewish community famous with in Bukhara. And uh, also uh, the traditional Jewish house had one courtyard, which was different from the Muslim courtyard that Muslim house, which has two courtyards, again, because of the religion needs. So, and there are uh, many others and probably uh, Ona could uh, also add some uh, architectural uh, details that he he was evident of. Ona, would you like to add something to that? Yes, yeah, just shortly. For example, they has the houses had one, two, or sometimes even three floors because they were overpopulated uh, of the city. You know, the Jewish quarters were growing. And uh, normally the Bukharian houses were just one or two. So this, this could be one of the difference. There was no division between male and female. Um, so they have only one common courtyard. Uh, and uh, well, the basement that we mentioned, um, the, there was a narrow door in a high fence between the buildings that uh, you know, used to lead uh, to the street and uh, I think there are many, many other attributes we have all also identified. Um, but uh, in, in general, of course, the, the, the decoration could be similar, but they have the inscriptions in Hebrew. Uh, they have the images of the six pointed star, fish and birds, landscape of holy places for Jews. So this, this could be you know, case to case um, differences in, in, the, in the houses. Well, that is really, helpful to, I'm sure it's really helpful for the audience to know, you know, we are, this is part of the process, you know, we are halfway through this project, it's been a year, we have another year ahead of us, so I'm sure a lot of these things will be recorded and documented um, very well for the, for the conservation guidelines, and in fact, there is a lot of questions in the, in the chat, and one of them is, um, or some of them are actually focusing on the process for the research and the archival materials that really connect to uh, all the questions that you were just saying. So 
if uh, you could tell us a bit more about the process. And you mentioned that before, Ona, the process to conduct research, to really identify the houses, to really document those houses. Very briefly, because we are running out of time, unfortunately, this, one, this, this webinar went really fast, uh, but maybe perhaps Ona and Dimitri, you can say something about the process to conduct the research on the ground, to connect with other collaborators who are really part of this process as well, beyond World Monuments Fund and ICAS. So um, maybe Dimitri, you can say something about the collaboration and Anna, you can continue after that. Yes, uh, sure, Javier, just very briefly. Um, as I said in my opening remarks, just recently uh, our organization, our institute was established by 11 countries. And so we have very close ties with them. Uh, so uh, ICAS as well has um, uh, a close collaboration with different institutions. And that's, for example, a year ago, uh, an agreement was signed uh, with the uh, Bukhara State University. And a lot of colleagues, our colleagues and uh, scholars from Bukhara State University uh, are now working with us uh, within this project. As well, um, of course, we have very close collaborations and different projects uh, which we uh, jointly um, implementing with national commissions, different national commissions for UNESCO, and especially the National Commission of, for UNESCO of Uzbekistan. I would say that uh, it's, uh, from my point of view, it's uh, impossible, almost impossible to overestimate such a valuable cooperation with different uh, parties involved. Uh, I do believe, again, personally, that uh, with such a joint cooperation, the most relevant and demanded projects are implemented only uh, on, on these uh, interactions. So, and uh, for, for our uh, projects, of course, we use a lot of uh, advanced technologies. I, I, I think that Ona will uh, give us uh, uh, more uh, clear uh, uh, overview of which technologies do we use. But again, that is very important uh, to not only to use technologies, but to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, construct kind of capacity building based on that. Uh, to involve young generation, young scholars to, to, to uh, use these technologies in the future, not only for this project. Oh, Ona, I, I think you will add. Thank you. Yes, well, I, Very I quickly, think I talked, I, Yes, no, I think I talked already a lot about the digital technologies. I just wanted to add because I've been, I've been seeing in the chat uh, a lot about the archives. So yes, we have been digging in archives, but I really appreciate everyone who's putting links and you know mentioning certain digital uh, uh, information that might be available uh, from archives uh, all over the world because this is what we want to bring together we cannot just you know reinvent a project uh, uh, you know and a research the first thing is look at what has been done um, also we have been looking at uh, for example and i and i took part of that with the unesco office in tashkent we surveyed all the historic center, more than 4,000 houses. So we already has, have a basic record we are working uh, with and many others. So I, I would like to really to thank everyone and uh, please keep in touch with us and you know, keep us feeding it with all this information so that we can uh, move on and together, all together we can protect the cultural heritage in Bujara. Well, and I would like to thank you, Ona, Dimitri and Sukrov for participating in the webinar for sharing so much information about this project. You know, it's really hard to encapsulate such a complex project in just one hour. Um, I think we need two hours or even three hours, but I really thank you for being here today. I really thank you for all the work that you are doing on the ground with us. Um, and really, you know, hope that we will be able to achieve this big mission uh, we have a year ahead of us and hopefully even more, uh, we will be able to contribute even more beyond this project to this very unique heritage. So thank you so much for being here today and for the work that you are doing. And with that, um, I think we are concluding our event today. I wanna thank all of our supporters that were able to join us today. I would like to thank our event partners uh, from the European Association for the Preservation and Promotion of Jewish Culture and Heritage and the New York and UK chapters of the American Institute of Architects. I would also like to thank 
all of our wonderful speakers, including our recorded guest interviewees that you saw in the initial video for their insights and contributions, as well as to the International Institute for Central Asian Studies for being our partners on this project and also for being our partners on this event. Once again, make sure that to take a look in the chat for the link to sign up for the AIA credits if you need to get those credits. And you will also find a link in the chat that contains a short survey about uh, World Monuments Fund's public programs. If you have two minutes, we would love to hear what you think about these platforms that we are using to share our work with you. I hope you will join us for our next events. You can visit our website at wmf.org for more details. And if you would like to support our work in Bukhara and our work at many other heritage sites around the world, you can go to our website too, to wmf.org slash donate or use the link in the chat. Our work really isn't possible without your support. And we are very thankful and grateful for, for that. I also invite you to discover our Heritage from Home series, which releases a WMF site virtual tour every month online. So go to our website and find out more about it. And with that, I would like to thank you all once again for joining us today and wish you a great day. Thank you, ciao.